at Banaras, present Varanasi. Okay. So before we discuss anything, there is a small activity that uh, we. It is very good to go with it and discussion. So let me go to the section given number one, number two, and number three as an introduction to. So the sermon at Banaras, it is taken from the source. Okay, source. It is given at the end of this chapter uh, of this chapter of this uh, sermon at Banaras. You will see there at the end it is written source. Okay, source from where Betty Rancho, right? Betty Rancho. So let us know about it betty reflects as a feminine gender so you can say her or she okay so let us know about betty rancho because she only had produced okay during uh, she had only produced a by the name okay values and voices which was published a, by the name of college reader in 1975. 1975. Okay. So Betty Rancho was an American music educator and author known for her work in music education, including music curriculum guides. She contributed significantly to curriculum development and instructional materials for teaching music in schools. So, this is all about Betty Rancho. Okay, she had printed in Values and Voices in 1975 by the heading A College Reader. Okay, so first one, what is a sermon? Okay, the question is asking okay for your understanding before the discussion about the given context regarding Gautama Buddha okay so what is a sermon is it different from a lecture or a talk can this word also be used in a negative way or as a joke as in the statement you will see when the statement your mother speaks at home okay like this my mother's sermon about getting my work done on time so is it same with this sermon or is it same with lecture or talk or other okay so let us uh, try to get the better understanding on this queries so a sermon, my dear student, is a speech, okay, is a speech or discourse given by a religious leader, usually intended to provide moral guidance, spiritual instruction or religious teachings to a congregation, gathering or audiences. It often includes reflections on sacred text and is delivered during religious services. So, this is called a sermon. That is, what is a sermon? Okay. Then, we have to know whether this sermon is, okay, different or same with lecture or talk. So, what is a lecture? A lecture is more academic, just at present that I am speaking, it is also a type of lecture and discussion, right? So, a lecture is more academic and is generally focused on imparting knowledge or information on a specific subject. It can be math, science, whatever, okay? Often in an educational or formal setting. So, this is called a lecture with a discipline, okay? Then, talk. A talk is less formal than a 
lecture okay less formal than a lecture and can be on a variety of topics that you uh, have a conversation with your colleagues with your classmates friends and many more okay so variety of topics delivered in different settings and may not have a religious or moral focus so the word sermon okay can indeed be used in a negative that is okay the first part what is that can, uh, say, this is the second part okay the word also can be used as a negative way or as a joke okay compared to this your mother at home okay so what you can say about this okay so the word sermon can indeed be used in a negative or humorous way especially when referring to someone giving an overly moralistic okay overly moralistic or long widened piece of advice or reprimand okay r e p r i m a n d reprimand as in my mother's okay my mother's sermon about getting my work done on time in this context it implies that the advice was perhaps a bit excessive or tiresome right so this is the difference okay of between sermon and this right now with your mother sermon sermon second thing to find out the meanings of the words and phrases given in the box so let us try to understand first one afflicted with here afflicted with means suffering from a problem or illness or you can say affected by something negative or harmful okay that is here it means afflicted with second be composed okay here be composed means to remain calm and in control of one's emotions or you can say to maintain composure composure third desolation okay desolation means a state of emptiness loneliness okay or extreme sadness or abandonment okay then fourth lamentation very simple right and means here an expression okay of deep sorrow or mourning as if somebody dies or some uh, thing happened bad in anybody's li life okay that is we are lamenting we are mourning also we are feeling very uh, so, uh, sorry we can say in simple word but we can say we are in deep sorrow or pain okay often in a vocal or public way in both way we are doing lamentation procure okay procure means to obtain or acquire something especially with effort or care okay be subject to be subject to means to be likely to experience or suffer from something or to be under the authority or control of something so these were the meanings that refers with these words and phrases okay so here still you have to differentiate which words are phrases and which words are just words so sing single word means that is a word and if more than one word is with the grouping then you can say that is a phrase okay so here it is this one is the phrase this one is a phrase and this one is a phrase and uh, just opposite of it they are words now moving with the third question that it asks have you heard of the sermon on the mount okay mount here means it is an abbreviation form of mountain that means mount of Cal calvary okay it is talking about the christianity here have you heard 
in your previous classes or anywhere by whom or any uh, friends might or might not but you are going to know here only okay and who delivered it certainly you will say jesus christ okay if you have heard okay then who do you think delivered a sermon at banaras simple answer is gotma buddha right so let me little bit uh, put some uh, clarity on this question okay what is this okay so the sermon on mount is one of the most famous teachings of jesus christ okay delivered to his followers or you can say disciples and that was recorded in the gospel of matthew okay in the new testament of the bible it includes the beatitudes and other teachings about love humility and righteousness by jesus christ. jesus christ had 12 remember okay 12 then let us move with the sermon at banaras what is this the sermon at banaras refers to the first sermon delivered by gotama buddha after he attained enlightenment okay it was delivered in sarnath near banaras now varanasi and is known as the dhamma chakra parvartana okay sutta or setting in motion the wheel of dharma this means this means that the consideration about a foundational teaching in buddhism where buddha explain the four noble truths and the noble eight four paths these are were the things okay so both sermons that was given by jesus christ and uh gotama buddha at the end they have moral values okay it is connected with the moral values that means it teach us spiritually something okay how to avoid our negativity and other ways to spiritually get strong so this is all about the things that you should know before we proceed with our discussion so let us move ahead for the further discussion about gotama buddha and uh, another side on the right side you will see there are some meaning okay that in between i will be not uh, saying anything but you should at least have an eye on it and read it and um, i always advise that you should have textbook while you listen this audio so that it will be more interesting and you will understand where uh, what you should underline okay something you will get connected with so let us begin with the teaching of gotama buddha that is mentioned here gotama buddha between 563 bc to 483 bc he lived began life as a prince named siddhartha gotama in northern india at 12 years of age he was sent away for schooling in the hindu sacred scriptures and four years later he returned home to marry a princess they had a son and lived for 10 years as they befitted royalty at about the age of 25 the prince Ethers, ethers of war. Here to say, shield it from the suffering of the world, while out hunting chance upon a sick man, then an aged man, then a funeral procession, and finally a monk begging for alms. 
Both sides so moved him that he at once went out into the world to seek enlightenment concerning the sorrows he had witnessed. He wandered for seven years and finally sat down under a people tree where he wrote, where he wrote to stay under enlightenment came. Enlightened after Seven days. He renamed the tree the Buddhi tree, the tree of wisdom, and began to teach and to share his new understandings. At that point, he, he became known as the Buddha, the awakened or the enlightened. The Buddha preached his first sermon at the city of. Benares, most holy of the dipping places on the river Ganges, that sermon has been preserved and is given here. It reflects the Buddha's wisdom about one inscrutable kind of suffering. So, in this passage, the narrator says that Gautama Buddha originally was called Prince Siddhartha Gautama was born in northern India and in around 563 BC and at the age after at the age after uh, at the age 25 after living a sheltered royal life he encountered sickness aging and death which deeply disturbed him seeking awareness to these sufferings he left his palace and wandered for seven years in search of enlightenment. After meditate, after yes, meditating, after meditating under a tree, later called the Buddhi tree, he attained enlightenment and became uh, known as the Buddha, meaning the enlightened one. Buddha means the enlightened one. He began teaching his wisdom, starting with his first sermon in Benares, sharing insights about the causes of human suffering and the path to overcome it. Moving ahead with further passages, let me read. Kisa Gautami had an only son and he died. In her grief, she cried <coughs> Kisa got me had an only son and he died. In her grief, she carried the dead child to all her neighbors, asking them for medicine and the people said she has lost her senses. The boy is dead. So here it says that Kisa Gautami was a mother who lost her only. Overcome with grief, she carried his no, she carried her life. Okay, no, she is a son. So yes, she carried. Uh, she carried his lifeless body to her neighbors okay asking for medicine to bring him back the people realizing her deep sorrow told her that the boy was already dead and that she had lost touch with reality okay at length kisa got meet a man who replied to her Request, I can give thee medicine for the child for thy child, but I know a physician who can. And the girl said, hey, Tell me, sir, who it is. And the man replied, Gomuni the Buddha. Okay. Gautami repaired to the and cried. Lord and Master, give me the medicine that will cure my body. So here it means that in her search for a cure for her 
Beth's son, Kisa Gautami, eventually met a man who told her. Okay, who told her what? I cannot give you. I know a physician who can. So when she asked who, he directed her to the Buddha. Okay, desperate for help, Kisa Gautami went to Buddha and begged, Lord, give me the medicine to bring my son back, back to life. The Buddha answered, I want a handful of mustard seed. And when the girl, in her joy, promised to procure it, the Buddha added, The mustard seed must be taken from a house where no one has lost a child, husband, parent or friend. So here it means that the book, that the Buddha told Kisa Gautami what he need a handful of mustard seeds to help you, okay, to help her. With hope, she agreed to get it. However, Buddha also added that the, the mustard should and must come from a house where no one has ever lost a child, spouse, parent or friend. Poor Kisa now went from house to house and the people PTA said, Here is mustard seed, take it. But when she asked, Did a son or daughter, a father, mother die in your family? They answered her, Alas, the living are few, but the dead are many. Do not remind us of our grief. And there was no house, but some beloved one had died in it. So, in this part, it says that Isa Gautami went from house to house, door to door, asking and begging for mustard seeds. And people offered them to her. However, when she asked if anyone in their family had ever died, everyone sadly replied that they had lost loved ones. She realized that every home someone had passed away and there was no house untouched by death. Isa Gautami became weary and hopeless and sat down at wayside watching the lights of the city as they flickered up and were extinguished again. At last, the darkness of the night ranged away and she considered the feet of men that there was flicker up and are extinguished again. And she thought to herself, How selfish am I in my grief? That is common to all. Yet in this valley of desolation, desolation, there is a path that leads him to immortality who has surrendered all selfishness. Here in this part, Isa got me exhausted, that means very tired, okay, and hopeless. She sat by the roadside watching the city lights flickering and going out. As darkness surrounded her, she realized that life like those lights and ghosts. Reflecting on this, she understood that that is a part of life for everyone. She has, okay, now she has understood fully. So she saw that her grief had made her selfish and realized that to peace and immortality comes from letting go of fishness. Okay. Moving ahead with the rest of the exercises. Also, okay, rest of the past me role, okay.
the buddha's life of mortals in this world is troubled and brief and pined with pain for there is not any means by which those that have been born can avoid dying after reaching old age there is that of such a nature are living ripe fruits are a danger of falling so mortals on are always in danger of as all earthen vessels made by potter end in being broken so is the life of mortals both young and adult both those who are fools and those who are wise all fall into the power of death all are subject to death so in this part says that the buddha taught that life is short and full of challenge everyone who is born will eventually die just like ripe fruit falls from a tree or clay pots eventually break whether young or old wise or foolish no one can escape death it is a part of life for all living beings of those who overcome death, depart from life of his son nor kinsmen their relations mark while relatives looking on and lamenting deeply one one mortals are carried off like an ox that is led to the slaughter so the world is afflicted with death and decay therefore the wise do grieve knowing the terms of the world here it means that the buddha explained that when someone dies even a father cannot save his son nor can relatives save each other uh, as love as loved ones watch and mourn people are taken by death just like an ox being led to slaughter since death and decay are unavoidable in this world wise people do not grieve because they understand that this is the natural cycle of life hope you are not uh, in bored with my little now we have reached at the end not from weeping not from grieving while anyone obtain peace of mind on the contrary his skin will be the greater and his body will suffer he will make himself sick and pale that are not saved by his lamentation he who seeks peace throw out the arrow of lamentation and plaint and grief he who has drawn out the arrow and has become composed obtain peace of mind he who has overcome all sorrow will become free from sorrow and be blessed so finally in this last passage or paragraph you can say it says that gautama buddha taught that crying and grieving will not be will not bring peace of mind instead they can increase a person's pain and lead to physical suffering lamenting for the dead does not help them it only harms the living to peace one must let go of sorrow complaint and grief by doing so a person can become calm and free from sadness ultimately finding true peace and happiness so discussion and uh, the enlightenment in this which it is uh, shared by whom by betty what is 
the name that ran show i hope you like and well understood so now you spend your time in self reading and get fully understand thank you thank you wait and watch for the next lecture and video that i'll loading soon